Hey guys, welcome back to Economics and Comics. So, I haven't been able to do movie reviews in quite some time because all the theaters are closed, but I have myself and Joel Massey, film critic here. We are going to review the movie Extraction, uh, the new Netflix original. So, let's get right to it. Should be pretty exciting. Are you ready for the sickness? Let's get into it. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me back. Hey, Joel, how you doing? Good, how you doing? So we're in seclusion at the at each other's each house, and we're doing what everyone else is doing, going uh, live via satellite. Yeah, so well, it's been a while since we've gotten to do a film review, so uh, I'm actually this, really this is kind of an interesting film because it's a, a essentially a Hollywood film that Netflix has has purchased and. I'm not sure. I can't remember if they produced it and had it made specifically for them or if they just purchased it, but I it is, like has all the trappings of a big Hollywood film, including the star. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, was made for Netflix. Yeah, it's. I know they've been going around and uh, producing a lot of content, uh, but they also buy a lot of films, uh, things that, that show at film festivals and whatnot. Yeah, so that's, I'm that's not sure what they did with this film, but. I wouldn't be surprised if they simply produced it and had it made specifically for them. But what, what I found very impressive is it doesn't have the feel of a typical kind of Netflix, made for Netflix movie. This this feels very much like a full on Hollywood film as it could have been in the theater uh, at any point. So. No, I really agree. I think it's like, it's like, uh, is it Tony Ja Unbach, ver, uh, John Wick mix with the yeah, right casting? It's a. Big action film, and it's uh, uh, what, what it is, is is you know uh, Sam Hargraves, the director, and he is a uh, stunt coordinator and an action director, uh, and this is his first film that he's directing, and you can tell immediately that his priority is to make as you know, the most intense, uh, you know, crazy, over the top action sequences that he can, uh, and he's also trying to do things like the uh, very notably, there's an 11 minute action sequence in the film. I thought it was that, 13 minutes. I think they touted it as 11, but what, what they're doing is it's, it's this very modern style of action where they uh, uh, make these long sequences that incorporate a bunch of different fighting, a bunch of different types of action, car chases, along with fist fighting, along with gun fighting, and they make it appear as if it is all one take. And uh, so, yeah, I, fr from what I've read, that it, it's a 11 minute sequence that looks like a one take thing. It's not, of course, they use a little trickery to to, to oh, film it right. in maybe three four minutes uh, a piece and then kind of you know meld it together, but it does it does look quite impressive and it's pretty creative. Yeah, when I I call so I called Joel last night and I said, okay, there's this movie. I'm halfway through. I just watched a part of it where it's like nonstop filming. You know, like like you said, different cameras, and it's pretty awesome. Watch it. Let's do a review tomorrow, and and so we did. So, um, I, you know, there's. I think Chris Hemsworth is the best. I mean, this is, here's what makes sense to me. Like, I love John Wick, Keanu Reeves. But, you know, growing up with him, I still look at him as, you know, <laughs> Bill and Ted's or maybe <laughs> Ted's. I never seen him as an act. Now, now I know I love John Wick, don't get me wrong. Um, and I know he's done a lot of training. But Chris Hemsworth fits this role so much better, I think. Like, physically, he's a big guy. Uh, he looks he looks more the part than Keanu Reeves would. And believe me, they are doing non-stop physical, close, close fighting, gunplay. It's very similar to John Wick, but at the same time, it does remind me of that classic, like, uh, Unbach. Fighting yeah. style. The the way the action is designed, the, the sequences, I, I, I like this better than uh, what, when films go out of their way to showcase a one take. Uh, for example, things like, now, The Children of Men is a fantastic film, and, you know, 1917 was pretty good. But those films kind of go out of their way to, to specifically show you something that looks like a really long take. And this film doesn't, to, in my opinion, it didn't go out of its way to, to just showcase the length of the, of the sequence. It kind of, the more of the focus was how, how many different styles of action can we put into one 
extended uh, action sequence. And I, and I thought that's much more interesting. It's less, it, it, it less pulls you out of the, the sequence and allows you to just really just focus on it and, and appreciate uh, the violence and the action and the things that are going on. Uh, you know, something like 1917, at moments it actually pulled me out of the film because they were doing things to such extreme lengths to, pr to make it appear as if it was all one take and the camera never stops. Let me show, I'm going to show a brief clip. It's like three little clips put together in one scene. And this scene is kind of like the first fight scene, which leads into this huge 11 minute uh, scene. Now there's a lot of action in this movie, but I'm just going to show you just a little piece, which really doesn't show much, but let's check it out. I mean, you've got the gun play like Call of Duty or like John Wick. He's doing all the moves. You know, you have the almost like the Jackie Chan, Tony Jaw style of getting away and making them hurt themselves. You have him pick up a cup and, and hit the guy in the throat. I mean, there's classic movie things all throughout just that little bit. But that is like this big of a movie like this big. I mean... It's nonstop, except for a couple pauses. Yeah, the uh, the comparisons to John Wick are going to be, they're right there. Obviously, it's very, you know, try, the same things that John Wick is trying to do with his action sequences, this film is as well. I actually found a little bit more of the raid in there. Uh, raid Because they're doing these very uh, violent maneuvers in, you know, close quarter hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, where people, you know, they're just smashing their heads against things and knocking them to the ground. And yeah, very much reminiscent of the, the sort of the types of maneuvers they did in the raid. Now, that's a perfect example. I mean, that's exactly, yeah, but we, it's, it's Thor. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like. It, it's, what, what it is, is it's basically an Americanized version of something like the raid, where they, yeah, they, they, still, they kept kind of the, a little bit of a gritty style, but they really polished things up and made it much more, John Wick meets the raid is what it is, uh, action style, which is a, which to me, I think that's a, that's a compliment because those are, you know, two of the more renowned action films uh, of, of recent histories. Now, the, the story basically is about a, a drug lord's son uh, gets kidnapped and everyone's trying, trying to get the kid. He's brought in to extract the kid and then everything goes wrong. Um, and and it goes on from there. And of course, he's de Chris Hemsworth dealing with his own problems. He's just this, you know, he's on a mission to die. Basically, it seems like he doesn't care. Um, and the bonding with the kid and trying to get him out of uh, where is it? Where is the location? They're filming like in multiple places, but so it's I believe a lot of it is filmed in India. But the location that the movie is supposed to be set in is Bangladesh. Uh, so I know it's been getting a little bit of, of uh, flack for that because they're not portraying Bangladesh the way it actually is. They're also, obviously, I mean, in every movie, especially action film, somebody has to be the bad guy. Uh, so they're, they're making Bangladesh look far worse than it is. But, so that's one of the criticisms is that they're not, they're using, you know, maybe some Indian actors with Indian accents yet they're supposed to be playing Bangladesh characters and things. So. Now there's a, another another guy who's, like a mercenary um, who's also trying to get the kid and you kind of, I don't want to you know, give you any secrets, but they're both fighting after trying to get this kid. What's that guy's name? Uh, that is uh, Sanju is the character and it's played by uh, Randy Puda. So I don't know. I, I don't remember seeing him anything. I have a feeling he's probably a pretty popular actor Outside. Yeah, I, I haven't, uh, I didn't recall seeing him in anything, but uh, yeah, he did a good job. Uh, he was one of the more interesting characters. He's kind of a, you know, a villain in a way. Um, and, you know, one of the things I was going, going to go back to is that because this film is, you know, created by an action uh, choreographer and everything, it's very clear that their primary focus is action. So yeah. when, when and, and that's great for people that love action films. However, where they do suffer a little bit is that the story is 
pretty basic. It's, it's something we've seen a million times before. It's sure. elements of Man on Fire and Taken and John Wick and Raid and all those things. So it's not it's not uh, thinking outside the box as far as the story goes. Uh, and then of course you have this, one of the things that really afflicts a lot of, of uh, action films is the the main villain isn't uh, very creative. And here once again, the the main main villain is the uh, drug lord that is kidnapped originally uh, initially kidnapped this kid and uh they've they, they've they've resorted to trying to to show why he's bad instead of giving him a personality so there's a sequence where he throws a kid off a roof and so oh, okay you immediately like okay well he's a bad guy but then he has no personality so then it's that was it's someone else that threw him of, off the roof it wasn't him he ordered someone to throw him off the yeah, roof. yeah he's, he's supposed to be the the uh they He's the boss, two, rival, two rival bosses. So, yeah, regardless, I think, you know, I think this was a great move for Netflix. Um, honestly, I feel like if this movie was in the theaters, it would have done well. People would have been thinking, oh, man, we got a whole thing here of a new John Wick that makes more sense. And this could go on for multiple uh, movies. And they even, you know, you think, you know, I'm not going to spoil the end, but, you know, there's room for more. And uh, what was the director's name again? Uh, Sam Hargrave. You know, it's it's possible that this was a film they were planning to put in theaters. And because of the pandemic, they decided, let's just premiere it on Netflix. I'm not sure, but uh, it certainly could, certainly could have worked that way. It does have a Netflix feel, though, to it. Um, it does, uh, except it's very, very action-packed. Um, the director, though, he he directed the stunts in the MCU uh, Marvel uh, cinematic universe, com MCU, uh, comics universe, the, for what, whatever movies, the Avengers, Thor, whatever. So this was his first action. I got to tell you, he knocked it out of the park for me. I was, I, I really enjoyed it. And it was good to enjoy it at home. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it, all of the action sequences are very competently made, pretty creative, uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, Story-wise, it's it's a you know it's it's a decent setup for an action film. It, it's nothing new. I think it does carry on a little too long. Uh, there is a, a sequence uh, that involves David Harbour, who is a great actor. He's uh, yeah. from Stranger Things, uh, but his his role is pretty much uh, unnecessary. They could have cut his entire sequence out. No, they needed you know, him twenty minutes off the film, and it would have been a much tighter paced thing. Yeah, maybe, but they needed him for that one that little break. Yeah, like you said, I mean, if the whole film the, the film does run two hours though, and I, I think yeah. they could have cut a few things to to really tighten that pacing, As, especially for an action film, uh, pacing is pretty important. Yeah, but it was it sure was action packed. Oh so yeah. So I, I was I was very happy when it, you know you guys. I think we'll probably end it here. Overall, um, I really really enjoyed this movie. Uh, give you a little thumbs up over there, Netflix above Joel. Um, I would I would say it's one of the better action movies I've seen in a long time, to be honest with you. And I thought uh, Chris Hemsworth did a perfect job. I it was believable. I think he did. It was very believable. And uh, I suggest going to watch it. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of action films, they uh, you know films of this nature where they're trying to make things realistic, but they're also throwing in uh, quite a bit of creativity with, you know, the, the characters are having to use their surroundings uh, as weapons. They're having to uh, use cars and transitioning from all kinds of different uh, locations. And just the, the flow of the action is very creative. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, think, I think it's worth seeing if you're a fan of action films. I agree. Well, thanks, Joel. We'll, maybe we'll try to find some other films to, uh, you know, go after here. Hopefully we can start going back to the movies again. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much, Joel, for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. You got it. And uh, if you guys want any codes or coupons or any goodies, watch this uh, little ending here. And check out this next video. Super giveaway. Thanks, Joel. Thanks so much.